right. So, uh, I first on the agenda is approval of meeting minutes. Has everyone had a chance to take a quick look at the meeting minutes that John sent? Okay. Uh, would anyone like to move to approve the minutes? You're muted, Meredith. I'll move. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Meredith moves to approve. Anyone second? Second. Okay, Jenna, second. Uh, all else in favor, say aye. 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 All right, great. Uh, public comment, John, you mentioned we did not have any public comments today. Correct, yep. Okay, so then we are moving on to staff reports. And at any point, John or Amy, especially since you guys are the pros, if I'm missing something, please don't hesitate to cut in and correct me um, uh, since I'm new to this to this chair thing. But it uh, looks like we're moving on to staff reports. And so, Amy, that's all you yeah so I'll, I'll offer the the staff reports but if anyone has questions please feel free to jump in and ask questions uh, a couple of the big ones for recreation programming uh, is we are getting towards the end of the hiring process for a new recreation supervisor position that specifically focuses on athletics and this is a position we've always had. It's just been vacant. Um, the predecessor left kind of right before COVID-19 uh, started, and we just, it didn't make sense to fill it during the pandemic. And, and now that things are returning slowly back to normal, um, it does make sense to have someone in this role. Um, so this Friday, our second interviews. And so we're hopeful to make a decision on this um, position in the next probably week or so. Uh, so hopefully next month I'll have an update to everybody um, on what candidate is selected. So I'm really excited about that. We had over 100 applicants. I think we had about 104. So um, a lot of a lot of very well qualified people. Uh, the other programming update is I'm really happy to announce that our department received two awards from the Minnesota. Um, Recreation and Parks Association, and that's our, our state organization that um, supports uh, recreation and, and parks um, programming and efforts across the state. Uh, one of the awards was for our virtual recreation programming during the COVID-19 pandemic. And then the second one was for the off-leash dog uh, park at Roosevelt um, and just how everything came together so well for that project. So we're really excited to be honored with that. And hopefully we'll be getting the physical awards, you know, sometime this year at a council meeting. They'd like to, the association would like to come um, honor those programs sometime. Um, and just a few COVID-19 updates. Uh, this week, we're hopeful to make some decisions with the red, white, and blue days committee. Um, public safety and public health about what's possible for the festival this summer in light of the pandemic um, and really kind of make some some decisions they need to be made soon just because um, insurance needs to be acquired pretty you know typically pretty soon um, and that needs to be paid whether we end up having it or not so there's a lot of kind of bigger decisions um, either I'm guessing either we'll decide we can do some of the events. Uh, we might have to modify, cancel some, or we may have to postpone some till the fall. Um, so we'll have to just kind of look at each each event that's part of that festival and see um, how it would be possible with the current guidelines and restrictions. Um, we are bringing back the Park Ambassadors Program. That started just a few weeks ago. Uh, so we have staff out in parks Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And they're doing two hour roving shifts, just like this past year. And if you're new to the commission, um, it's something that we did pretty robustly during the pandemic. This year, since we're kind of transitioning back to a more normal summer, um, we're gonna be doing it, but just at a uh, smaller scale. 
because uh, most of the staff are going back to their full-time duties. Uh, but I think we all saw the the awesome benefits of the program. I get staff out in parks talking to residents, doing light maintenance, and particularly litter cleanup. Um, it was really helpful going into the weekend at some of the larger parks, um, such as Veterans Park before the farmer's market um, is a big one. And some of the parks that have shelters just to make sure they're looking good for our rentals over the weekend. That started a few weeks ago though. So if you see people out in the parks, you know, make sure to say hi to staff. Um, we collected a lot of litter last year as well. So it uh, just helps make the parks look that much nicer for guests. Um, we are going to be putting together and submitting our pool mitigation plan for the summer. We've been working on it slowly, like the last month or so, um, as different guidelines for COVID kind of changed. Um, but I think we're, we have a, a pretty firm idea what we're going to do for the pool. So we're going to be submitting that to public health and our public safety, uh, to review and kind of go over with us how the pool will will be hopefully run this summer. And then also the farmer's market. We're finalizing our summer farmer's market COVID plan. Um, and this summer, you know, last summer we had a lot of mitigation if you were there to make that possible. Um, you know, this summer we're anticipating mitigation, but probably not, not as intense as last summer. Um, those are kind of the big updates for programming and COVID-19. Does anyone have any questions about any of that? Sorry, I have a couple questions. Um, I know Vets Park has had some improvements coming up. Um, and if you're gonna cover that later, then we can definitely skip that now. But then my other question was um, a park cleanup that I have heard whispers mm -hmm. of. Um, yeah. So I was curious what that what that is if that's through your program. Yeah. No. Thank you for bringing that up. So we are planning an Earth Day cleanup. It was going to be this Thursday um, for staff, commission members, council, like really anyone who could come. And that was from eleven to two at Veterans Park, meeting at the pavilion. Um, but it's worked out this week where a lot of staff are working from home because of the verdict and. Um, we are also getting the parking lot surfaced on Thursday. So we are rescheduling it to May 20th. If you can put that date in your calendar and if you're available, um, we'll forward you that announcement. But the Earth Day cleanup will be from 11 to 2 on May 20th. Great. You know, staff comes, the council typically comes, um, and people come for maybe an hour. We're inviting people to bring a big lunch if they'd like to eat lunch under the pavilion, and we'll be doing a light cleanup of the park that day. And then, yeah, I will talk about Vets Parking Lot when we go through the park projects for 2021. That one's on the list. Wonderful. Thanks. Yep. Any other questions at all? Okay. Um, the next staff report is about the inclusive playground and that project kicked off yesterday. Uh, it's been a long time uh, in the making, so we're super excited to have that underway. If you go by Augsburg Park, the playgrounds were removed and we actually had um, a school adjacent to a reservation in Montana come out and disassemble the playground yesterday and they're going to be rebuilding it um, in Montana. And that area, um, we're meeting with staff tomorrow, we're going to be kind of rehabilitating the area um, where the old playgrounds were and we are going to be restoring them with some pollinator plants and kind of doing some, some native plantings there um, adjacent to that stormwater pond. So. That should be, um, a, you know, really nice to have that component of the project done. And then we also started yesterday, um, kind of the layout of the playground, everything kind of got measured and, and coned off and spray painted. Um, today they started some 
So kind of roughing in where everything was is going to go. Uh, we are anticipating the playground, depending on whether we will have it done by mid June. And I should have more of a firm date for you next month because we'll have a ribbon cutting ceremony. And of course, all of you will be invited. Um, but we'll definitely want to celebrate that that project getting completed. So that will be done. Yes, mid June. You know, any questions at all about the inclusive playground? Um, I don't have any questions, but I've seen plenty of comments on the community page and I live near that playground. So I've, I've heard other people talking about it and um, I think people are excited, somewhat impatient, but mostly excited. <laughs> I'm excited, so yeah. Yeah, I, I, I had a question. Oh God, sorry. Oh no, go ahead. Um, oh, you're cutting out, Brooke. I don't know if anyone else can hear you. How about now? Yes. <laughs> um, a community member had actually reached out to me and wondered why the neighbors weren't notified on that. And I feel like, was it just planned so long ago that they were notified like back in whenever the process of it was for planning or... Yeah, it's a bigger park. So in Richfield, some of our bigger parks, they we don't really define them as neighborhood parks. They're more community parks. So some of our bigger community parks, we we don't necessarily meet with the neighbors like we do with some of those smaller, more of like pocket parks that are in smaller neighborhoods. Um, so this one, you know, we didn't do a community or neighborhood notification and, and ask people preferences and things like that. Um, we did hear quite a few comments from, um, you know, the disability community that they would really like a playground that had more opportunities. And that was something coming into this position. I heard from my predecessor that that's something that the community really wanted. Um, so we wanted to try to make that happen um, at, in one of the parks that was up for a new playground. And this one really should have gone in last year. It's just a matter of finalizing the funding for it. That took an extra amount of time. Got it. I saw the sign for it. It looks awesome. I'm excited to bring my kids there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it should, it should be really fun. I'm excited too. You know, any other questions with the, about the playground? And then the last one is the Wood Lake Nature Center building project update. I just wanted to, you know, let everybody kind of know where we're at with that. Um, so we've been meeting with a uh, architectural firm called HGA, and I, I believe I updated you with that last month. And they've worked on those projects um, that we noted at like Theodore Worth, the Gathering Center, Whitetail Woods down in Dakota County, and Westwood Hills and St. Louis Park. Those are three recent projects that would be on a similar scale to um, Wood Lake Nature Center. And today we had our third meeting and we're getting into um, kind of more of the, the concept, concepts of what the building may look like. Um, and when we you know, really started at the last few meetings looking at Wood Lake and where a new building could go, we're very limited um, with how wetlands are delineated in that property. Um, but basically where the nature center sits now is where a new nature center can go. <laughs> so it kind of limits, um, you know, a building going somewhere in a different corner of the park or the scope of it and the size. Um, but in some ways it's nice too, because it helps to find, um, you know, where, where it is going to go. Um, so we've been working with them and to, to look at some of the main themes of a new building um, and kind of winnow down the sustainability measures that are really important to us that we want to make sure we incorporate. Um, we want to make sure it's accessible, inclusive, um, really showcases our, you know, the park itself and connects strongly to the resource. And uh, I'm really excited. We just had our meeting this afternoon. I feel like the direction we're going in um, is really positive. We are hopeful by 
the end of May on May 25th that we would be able to present our pre designed schematics and themes to our city council on that night. So we have a work session that we'll be presenting to them and I'll have more information for you in May too. We should be closer to kind of like a ta-da moment <laughs> where we can kind of show people um, the potential of what the project could look like. It is pre-designed, so there's nothing set in stone. Um, it's not a the the final design. It's it's just a, this is what it could look like. So we'll have a lot of opportunities ahead for um, public feedback. You know, to actually be where we are now, to where a building would start being constructed is is years away. So we have um, years of providing feedback and getting input from the community. Um, you know, into what the direction we're going and, and just getting feedback if that's what people would like to see or if they would like to see something else. Um, but May 5th is Woodlake's actual birthday. It's turning 50 on Cinco de Mayo. So we're pretty excited um, about that. And if you look on Woodlake's Facebook page today, they um, provided a few dates of opportunities for people to kind of celebrate the birthday. They're going to be doing something on the solstice in June, and then October 2nd is the big community birthday party. So we're hopeful that post pandemic or the worst of the pandemic, we'll be able to gather in, in bigger numbers and celebrate Woodlake's birthday. Um, but with May being the actual birthday, we are going to be making May Woodlake Nature Center month for the city of Richfield. We're going to have a small gathering on Woodlake's actual birthday with our council. Um, and a few key like elected officials that would be involved with this new building process. Um, just to kind of talk about um, the direction Woodlake is, is going and kind of celebrate the actual birthday. And, um, you know, I think where we're at right now with securing the funding for it. Um, as I think noted last month, we did submit a request for um, uh, through a bonding bill for funding from the state. And then this past month, about two weeks ago, we submitted a grant to the federal government um, through a program called the federal um, the funding for community projects. And that was for a lesser amount, but it would um, be wonderful to to get that funding support to definitely have the some some support for the project. Um, so we should know more about that hopefully in the coming month, I would think. That one has a quicker turnaround. Uh, but this but this project, um, you know, it's a very big project. I like to think of it more as a marathon than a sprint. It's gonna be, I think, little updates every time we meet. Um, and hopefully we'll slowly get there. But yeah, I I um I'm really excited about it though. I think it's such a treasure for our community and also the region. Any questions at all about Wood Lake Nature Center? No. Nope. All right. We can probably go on to discussion. You think? Yep, sorry, I was muted. Oh, no. but yeah, <laughs> looks like we're ready to do, go on to the discussion items, which again, Amy is your uh, yes, your, your to do. So go for it. <laughs> um, well, we're we're moving along with our playground replacements for the summer. Um, we have aside from the inclusive playground, the two playgrounds that are up for um, renovation are the one in Fremont Park which is a neighborhood park, and then Christian Park, um, kind of off of, of 12th um, Avenue. And because of, I think, the steel industry just being really behind in production by about two months, I've been told, or more, um, we started our kind of playground replacement project a little early this year. Um, so 
what we did is, is John did a wonderful job kind of creating um, these survey sheets. And this is something we've done in the past, but we typically go to City Hall in the neighborhood that that playground is in. Uh, we invite residents to come in and kind of provide feedback to us as to like what kind of slides they'd like to see, what kind of swings, just the different play components. But because of COVID, we thought it would be better to go out to the parks. And I feel like it, it could be our new best practice. I, I really think there was more benefits to being in the actual park that's getting the playground. You know, people were able to walk over to the park and I didn't know what to expect. I was thinking, oh, we're gonna have like 10, 15 people. We had, I would say at least 40 people for each park. So it was a lot um, and it was nice because residents were able to provide more feedback than just the playground. Like they were able to just tell, talk to us about simple things that they would like to see in the park. Um, you know, some of them are really inexpensive, like the basketball hoop needs a new net. Uh, some of them were really big, like you need to redo the whole park. Mm -hmm. um, that might not be doable. Um, but it's nice to hear feedback and just hear, um, uh, just hear, you know, how much people do like their community parks. And I think Kevin asked, like, when did we go to the parks? And we went to Fremont Park on April 6th from 5.30 to 7. And then on April 8th, we went to Christian Park from 5.30 to 7. And if people couldn't come to the actual park that night, we put the surveys in the free little library at Augsburg Park so they could drop them in our mailbox or they were online too. So they could just fill out like through Survey Monkey and, and send it in. So we we had a couple different uh, like mechanisms to get it done. And we actually had people fill out the survey online that just wanted to come talk to us too. <laughs> so. I don't know. It was really um, nice just to, to be out there talking with residents. So. Um, but what John's done is he's compiled all the data from the online surveys, the mailed in surveys, and the in person. And we kind of got a clear picture as to what people would prefer in each playground. And that's how we put together our RFP that will go out to the playground vendors. Um, we're hoping by the end of this week, we'll get those out. And there's, I can't remember, maybe John knows, like about six or seven kind of key playground companies in the Midwest that we send the RFP out to. Yep, yep six, six, seven, eight. Yep. Um, they're going to be due May 24th. So they'll have you know, about a month a little more than a month to put together proposals. And we're hopeful to score them on May 27th. And I've only been a part of that one time since I started. And I know Kevin was there that evening. And what we did is we just set up stations around a room with, um, you know, a whole bunch of kind of schematics of what the playground would look like. And we had scoring sheets based on what the neighborhood preferences were. So we scored them. Um, and then, you know, we, we figured out who would, um, you know, be the company that selected to install the playgrounds. And then the process will be on June 8th, our recommendation then will go to council. The city council will just kind of approve that, you know, X company will, will be the one that will be awarded the contract to install the playgrounds. Um, I don't know if there's anyone here tonight that would be interested in coming on May 27th. You know, we could have multiple people come score the proposals. Uh, I would anticipate it wouldn't take more than 30 minutes, maybe 35. There's only two playgrounds, so I would say 30 minutes top. Um, we haven't selected a time yet, but um, John and I could, you know, kind of figure out a time and a place. And, you know, if it's nice, we could probably do it outside too with 
it wouldn't be that hard to set it up outside kind of spread out um and, and whoever would like to come you know would anyone would be invited to come kind of score them yeah i'd love to yeah. i live in christian park so perfect yeah so tell yeah. me in i would be i would be up for it as well um depending on the time but more than likely uh, i could make it okay well once we set up a, a time on the 27th we can send out an invite and maybe we can just kind of make it a, a few hour window people in our group can stop by and score them if they have time um and then we'll just take a look at what people think and and go from there awesome yeah. any thoughts on or any any questions or comments on that process Okay. And then we like to, at the beginning of the summer, just kind of share with the group uh, a reminder as to what park projects we're doing this summer. So I, I can pull up um, our park projects, just a second. That looks to be the third page of the agenda here too, in case anyone's. All right, so looking at the budget from last year, you know, if you are new to the um, commission, we in the past have gotten $450,000 um, and it comes from the liquor store revenues from the mun municipal liquor stores. Um, and last year, the commission approved a budget uh, with these projects. Uh, we have some money held from really a year ago for the inclusive playground. So that project has gotten started. Uh, Christian and Fremont, we have $90,000 um, for each playground budgeted. Those will probably, um, you know, in the RFP will request that those playgrounds get done after Labor Day because um, the steel uh, to manufacture them will probably take most of the summer to produce the playgrounds and get them shipped. And then just to make sure, you know, we have the highest play value, we'll keep them in this summer. And then when the students go back to school, we can install hopefully in September sometime. And then last summer we received a grant. And as a part of that, um, we were able to acquire two hammock stations. And um, we are looking at kind of a hammock station at Christian Park. There's a couple locations for that that would work out nicely uh, with a little bit of shade. And then the second one would go in at Wood Lake Nature Center. And, you know, just seeing how people use the hammock stations, if they're popular, it, you know, it's something we may be able to budget for a few more each, you know, each year down the line. It's, it's an activity, I think, a lot of kind of teenage um, youth like to do. So it's kind of a nice way to um, have have that for them in the parks of really all ages. We do have hammocks too um, through uh, a grant that we received last summer that we can check out to people. So if they don't have hammocks, we can check them out um, for a week at a time. Uh, one of the projects, it's not super flashy, but it is needed, and that is the Veterans Park parking lot. That um, started last week. We started the curbing. So if you've been over to Veterans Park, uh, some of the curbing that was collapsing um, got fixed. I think today was the last day of curbing. And then tomorrow morning, we are gonna start milling that parking lot. So starting first thing in the morning, that uh, parking lot will be closed off, off of, um, I think it's 64th in Portland or 63rd, coming down into the park. 
that's all going to be ground up and then repaved maybe even starting tomorrow more or I'm sorry tomorrow afternoon and paved all day Thursday Friday it's going to be striped um, so we're going to keep it closed through Friday night so it has time to kind of dry and set and then the parking lot will reopen on Saturday so it, it should look really good we'll have some fresh curbs new asphalt and then um, the, the sidewalks that cut across on that entrance road there they weren't um, you know as accessible as they could be so we made some accessibility improvements on those sidewalks that will all be finished as well now we have hundred and twenty five thousand dollars budgeted to this project not knowing how where the bids would come in and they came in at a really good rate so we also have money to fix um kind of the potholes out in front of the ice arena on kind of the front side by the pool and the arena um there are some large holes and if you've ever rode your bike or walked around the arena if you're on the vets park trails some of them are getting to be more significant so we're going to take some of the money that would fall within the kind of the improvements there for the parking lot and try to fill some of those holes and then the last project is um kind of like the playgrounds we also try to renovate the tennis courts based on age and, and kind of where the the one that's probably in the most dire need is Madison tennis court. So that one is going to be seeing some renovations this summer. Um, you know, just other little projects too going on in the parks that we um, had some grant funds for. One is some improvements at Wood Lake Nature Center with the kids outdoor play area. They're gonna be adding like a hillside slide, a tunnel, um, so that would be nice to have some new features there. We'll also be adding um, a few new signs to park. So the inclusive playground will have a nice sign as you come into the playground, kind of honoring some of the, um, the project sponsors. And then a veterans park at the pavilion, we're going to be getting a new kiosk there as well. And that was all funded through grants, the signage. Awesome. Yeah, so lots of, you know, good projects. I think that will make a significant improvements across the system this summer. Uh, now, I know the park ambassadors last summer did a little bit of of tracking when it comes to who attended the parks and what they did and things like that. Is the plan to have them do that again this year? and be able to kind of compare a little bit? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, yeah, so we do have the same data sheets that we had last summer um, where we're gonna be you know, writing down how different parks are being used. And yeah, I think every year we do park ambassador, that will be great data just to see what are the amenities people are using, what aren't they using, how many people are in certain parks. and not really scientific but it does give us like a little snapshot in, into the park use um so yes i can have um renee zinc she's uh, one of our recreation supervisors she could definitely come and and do a little report about park ambassadors to the group because we compiled all that data from last year and it was, it was really kind of neat to see what's going on in the parks yeah. Awesome. Um, I think uh, if if no one has any questions or if, if you don't have anything else for the park projects, Amy, then we'll, we'll move on to the action items. Um, if that works. So action yeah. items, the first one here is the 21 to 26 capital improvement budget. Um, and I vaguely remember kind of taking a look at this last year, I think. Um, 
So everyone should have it in their agenda. We want to give yeah, everyone a few minutes to kind of look over it, or did you want to, to do a little explaining, Amy, for this? Yeah, I think I'd like to do a little explaining because it is different than some other years. Um, one thing you'll note is that we did get a $50,000 increase to the budget. And, you know, we are hopeful that any year we can, that we can keep bumping that up. Um, I think when you look at the overall needs of the park system, we have an older park system. You know, we're not like a Maple Grove or um, a younger city where you have a lot of newer parks and newer facilities. Um, a lot of our facilities are getting to the age where they need major reinvestment, like our park buildings, our nature center, um, you know, and it's a lot of it's kind of coming to head. And I know we talked about it last month, but like our pool is turning 60, the ice arena, uh, the nature center are turning 50. So we, we just have some pretty old amenities that haven't had major reinvestment. Um, you know, they've been maintained well and they, they look great, but um, there are some, some pretty significant needs. So at the bottom of the budget, um, you know, each department has been asked now to kind of give a much bigger picture for the major park projections. Um, and we are forecasting a new nature center, you know, could be around at least 16 million. We need a new pool liner. It is the original pool liner that is turning 60 this year. Um, for a new pool liner and aquatic improvements, um, anywhere I would say from two and a half to three million. And just knowing we're not going to be doing this in the next year or two, potentially, probably closer to three with inflation. And we are getting a second uh, quote for the aquatics. So we'll have that for next month. We just did a lot of major ice arena renovation with the refrigeration and we were able to do some re-roofing on rink one, but we were not able to do rink two. Um, so we do need to do some roof improvements. And then if you walk around the ice arena, you'll see underneath the eave, there's kind of a wooden fascia. And that is getting um, it rotten and it's getting pecked by woodpeckers pretty bad. So that's um, you know, something we need to look into. And then there hasn't been a major reinvestment into um, our athletic facilities. And those would be, you know, things like Donaldson Park, Taft Park, Washington Park. Um, and one of the things I think that we need to look at, like, seriously down the road is making sure we have the right athletic amenities that our demographic, um, you know, is seeking. Right now, we have a lot of softball fields, um, you know, and softball is still popular, but we also have a greater demand for soccer. So, would it, you know, some things we think about, would it make more sense to take, you know, a softball field? here, there, and convert it into soccer to meet that demand and, and make sure, um, you know, what we have is a good fit for what our community is, is looking for. Um, and, you know, there's light improvements that need to be done. Um, some of the park buildings, particularly at Donaldson Park, are in pretty rough shape. So the 23 million is just kind of a snapshot as to just major improvements. And then we still have the, the annual improvements that need to be looked at, you know, such as the playgrounds and the tennis courts, parking lots, <laughs> things like that. Um, so it can feel pretty overwhelming. It's, it's big numbers. Um, so one of the strategies we have is we need to start showing that we are, particularly for Wood Lake Nature Center, that we are budgeting money towards a new building. And that's something that will come up with state bonding. You know, are you budgeting money, you know, yourself for this project? And, and we need to be. So you'll see starting next year, there's $100,000 budgeted to Wood Lake. The next year it's 125. 
Um, and same thing with the outdoor aquatics. We need to start setting aside some money um, for this and some of this major maintenance, just setting money aside to, to kind of winnow down those big numbers. I think the most important thing to really focus on though with the budget is, is next year because, you know, it can change a lot from year to year, but the, the, the year um, next year is probably the most important. And a lot of this could, you know, as different funding sources may come about available, could be subject to change in the later years. And we might get more funding too, I'm hoping. Um, I know it's a lot. So do, do people have questions that I could help try to answer? Uh, I know that we talked earlier and maybe this was later last year, I can't recall, but, and there were some pool issues. So I see that we have a little bit budgeted in here for the pool, but it sounds like we're, we're going to be able to make it work with just that little amount for this year. Is that right? Yeah. So you probably recall, um, because we didn't have water in the pool last summer because of the pandemic, part of it kind of buckled. So we do have the money to do some of the concrete fixing, and then we're going to be um, repainting part of the pool too, because it, it does need to be up to code and all that would need to be done before it opens. So Chris and I, um, you know, just last week we met and kind of talked about what we need to do to get the pool open. And I, I think it's going to be around $30,000. The, the work that needs to be done. So we should have enough um, to do it this year to get okay. it. I was just curious about done. that. Yeah. And then if you're new to the commission to uh, the policy with playgrounds, just so if, if you're curious, like, you know, how did we select which one comes each year? It's based on age. Um, so the oldest one, you know, is up next so next year it would be sheridan and monroe and they're the next oldest and then donaldson and so on and so forth so. awesome thank you amy for that yeah i do think a lot could change you know we are hopeful to get this wood secure some fund some serious funding for the wood lake project and you know when and if that when it happens it could, this can be that significant amount would be taken out of this then so a lot of it is subject to to change so uh being an action item just to be clear, I need to make sure everyone agrees, right? I need to first, I need a second, and then we need a quorum. Is that correct? That's correct. Yep. Okay. Now, All right. Am I missing anything with budget stuff? Did I miss anything? No, I think that pretty much uh, covers it. Yeah. So the action would be to recommend council approval. Okay. All right. So we will be voting on recommending as a commission that the council approves this. So, uh, do I have a first vote to recommend that? I guess technically we call call for that motion. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so moved. And a, <laughs> and a second. Can I ask who who just said so moved? David Benson. So David, moved. thank you. I'll second. Brooke, was that you? Yep. Thanks. And then am I asking for eyes or am I okay? Yep, all, right. all those in favor. Yeah. All those in favor. Say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Thanks all. <laughs> okay, great. So that recommendation will be made. Uh, and will that recommendation be made at the next city council meeting or at the work session? Um, the city the does, yeah, it, it will be a little while. I think we, we, 
we this is due before our next meeting in May to our finance director, and then I don't think it goes to consul to early summer. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Yep. Okay. It's great. Sometime in June, I believe. Okay. All right. Next action item here is the Friends of Wood Lake board appointment, and I have not done one of these before, so this is extra exciting. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, the Community Services Commission um, is responsible for appointing members to the Friends of Wood Lake uh, fundraising group, and uh, it has unlimited membership and residency is not a requirement. Um, and uh, this is a reappointment. Okay. How long are appointments? For three years. Three years. Three years. Yeah. Just read my, my agenda here. Thanks, John. Yeah, I don't think we had yeah. any last year. So, no, no, I, I think you're right. Yeah. All right, great. So everyone should have the agenda that um, shows the reappointment information for this uh, as well. So if you can take a look, or if you have already taken a look, um, are these submitted to you, John, or? Yeah, we would just, uh, if, if uh, if everyone's had a chance to look at it, then you mm -hmm. could just call for a motion to appoint um, that person for a three year term and, and take a vote on it. And as that. It's all, all good. Yep. All right. Awesome. Uh, if everyone has had a chance to look, uh, we will go ahead. Does anyone move to approve Patrick Bergen? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. David Benson. Thanks, David. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. All right. All right. We'll well, it sounds like Patrick is appointed to another three year term. All right. We'll let him know. Okay. All right, next we've got committee reports. Um, the first here is Transportation, Transportation Commission. Uh, Kevin, I know that's yours and I know you're on, but I know you may not be feeling well, so um, let us know uh, what you're thinking or if you just wanna um, type it in, I think that's also fine and I can read it. No, just real quick. Um, the big thing, the Transportation, they had a joint session with the City Council dealing with the 494 changes looking at 494 and 35W intersection. And the one that makes the most uh, impact for us is they were also discussing how the interchange at 494 in Portland is going to change and that affects the intersection at 77th um, mm -hmm. and, and 76th for that matter, which means it encroaches on the park. So they showed a few different options. Um, and the, the trade-off of course is eating into the single family homes on the east side of Portland versus encroaching into the park. Um, I think most people were pretty clear that ideally we would not, we would minimize the amount of park the space that we would lose, but you know, it's, it is what it is. And um, it's still just a working session. There isn't obviously any plan in place. Once that comes out, then we can talk more about the extent to which it might take up some park space. Okay. Is that Roosevelt Park right there? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, we, okay. staff has been in some pretty you know, extensive meetings with MnDOT and the Metro Transit is involved as well because they are gonna be making a new bus station somewhere in that um, intersection as well on 77th and um, you know, we, we've definitely been pushing back that we'd like to keep this project out of the park as much as possible, just because we don't want it to take away any of the dog park. That's the area that would be impacted. So, um, so far, it seems like they're kind of trying to rework it in many ways to, to lessen the impact. So that's a positive, positive thing. So. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, foul board, and that is Bruzek. Yes. Uh, so the foul board's been really working on planning the like primarily the October birthday event, 
the summer solstice event will be smaller in scale than the October event. And right now for the October event, um, you know, it's really probably, they're still very much working on it, uh, a little more family oriented in the afternoon and day with family activities that are maybe somewhat self-directed, but also, you know, there's going to be a community element and then, you know, still kind of throwing around ideas of if there will be a brewer or music at night that might be a little bit more adult or if people want to come later in the day that don't want to be around uh, small children. And the other thing really exciting at Woodlake is that they've been able to have kids back for programming for the first time since last year. So for we met last week and last week they had their first groups of kindergartners in and that's been pretty fun. And also working on getting the goldfish out of Woodlake. <laughs> <laughs> which uh would like received a grant for they think that goldfish come from grass lake so mostly working on the birthday party nice lots of planning on the birthday party yes yes that sounds awesome thank you meredith uh next we've got the planning commission and stephanie i think that's yours now uh yes they canceled the meeting for um which is supposed to be for this month in april and then so they didn't include the minutes from like last month so the only ones i have is the one from okay uh, february so and that one was they were just you know on there was just talking about like the appointments they had for their own like commission there wasn't really like anything yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so April's canceled, but you'll uh, yeah. Hopefully so hopefully, I guess the one they'll do for May, they'll include like the minutes, I guess, like for March, mm -hmm. I guess that they had since they canceled. They're canceling this meeting for this month. Okay, thank yeah. you. Arts Commission, and that is Lisa, and I don't believe we've got Lisa here. No, we still don't have Lisa here, so. I think the big update from the Arts Commission is they are looking um, at partnering with a group called the Minnesota Valley Poets. And they're a group that puts in poetry trails at different parks. Uh, they just did one in Mankato this past summer and they wanted to partner in Richfield and see if there is a park they could install one in. It's just poetry um, that they put on signs that would you know go through a park and kind of create a trail. Uh, we are looking at Richfield Lake, and so tomorrow night there's an open house um, at the um, band shell kind of adjacent to the co-op there off of Lindell Avenue. And, um, you know, just getting some community feedback. It hasn't been set at Richfield Lake. I think there's other parks that could work as well. Um, but just to learn more about the poetry itself, the signs, um, we're hopeful to have a QR code on the poetry signs that would offer them in Spanish as well, just to be a little more inclusive. Um, but yeah, and, and it's their signs that would get changed out every few years. So there'd be new poems that go in, but it's just another way to kind of enhance people's experience and, and bring art to the park. Um, I know, you know, there are some residents that, that feel strongly that Richfield Lake wouldn't be the best part for the project. Um, so I, I do think, you know, if that is the feedback we get tomorrow night, we can also look at other parks. There's several that have kind of a circular path that could work just as well. So. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you, Amy. Mm -hmm. Next, we've got the Friendship City Commission. Ralston, I think that's yours. Yep, that is me. Um, not too many new things going on with them. They had a change in their display cabinet, so you can go and check that out. And I believe they're looking at 2022 for maybe a potential trip to Costa Rica. So that's exciting. And yeah, that's kind of all that's new with them. Awesome. Okay, sustainability, Jenna. All right. Well, still no um, update on organized collection. They're still in contract negotiations. Um, and then at the last meeting, they had um, a tree preservation policy education panel. So some experts came in to talk to the commission um, about legacy trees, um, 
so mature trees that um, should be kept and preserved. Um, and then also information about why some trees are being cut down in Richfield um, and why, you know, we're, we're losing some trees due to climate change, um, disease, a lot of, I know there's a lot of emerald ash um, going down um, and just, you know, learning about, about the trees. And I think that's about it. I don't know if Amy, if there's anything else you'd like to add. No, I think that covered it. Um, they are working on a, a tree preservation policy. And I think the input we got from the um, professor that came and the tree expert is kind of just take your time with it. So I think it's something that wouldn't get implemented like in the near, near future, but hopefully, you know, sometime before the end of the year. Would that be part in included in the climate action plan, like an amendment, or would it be a separate thing? I think it'd be a separate thing. Uh, we met today and we're talking about, is it better to have it as a policy or an ordinance? Um, there might be pieces of it that's policy and then there's ordinance underneath it that are enforceable. So there's, you know, different elements to it. Um, we also want to meet with our, you know, our attorney and, and look at what's actually enforceable on, on private land on, um, you know, can you tell people you can't cut down your tree if they want to cut it down and just kind of looking at mm -hmm. um, some of the, the legal ends of, of things as well is really important. Awesome. Great. Well, thank you both uh, Jenna and Amy for that info. Uh, the last one we've got here is the Honoring All Veterans Memorial and Brooke, that one is yours. Yeah, so I didn't receive an invite to their April meeting, so I'm not sure if it's still coming up or when it is or who I reach out to to find out when they meet. John, are you able to? Yeah, I can. I'll send your contact info to them again and um, make sure they have that for your for the meeting invitation. The next one would be, um, let's see, they're the third Thursday, so I think they were last week, so it'd be May at this point. Yeah. Yeah, they had sent me an email like welcoming me, but then I never received any like <laughs> further communication. Oh, okay. maybe just need well, to add you to the list or something. Yeah. And I wasn't okay. sure if they're in person or if they're online. They prefer to be in person. And so since this past month was warm enough, they met, I think, at the pavilion at Veterans Park and they just kind of spread out. Okay. Um, but yeah, I apologize. They left you out of the invite. Uh, I think some of their invites, because they're never sure if they're what the weather is going to be, if it's going to be in person or not, they they kind of throw it together a little last minute. But we'll um, we'll make sure they get you included for May. Sounds good. I'll go May. Then. Yeah, I think the big thing with um, the honoring all veterans group is they are going to be doing their Memorial Day program uh, virtually. So they're putting that together, even components um, soon. And then they have a videographer that will be helping piece it together. And then um, John and, and our communications team at the city will help kind of push it out to everybody. All right, then, thanks. Yep. Okay, great. Well, hopefully you'll be able to um, get on that next one then, Brooke. Um, as and as it gets nicer, that might be nice to be able to do those outdoor meetings. Actually, um, maybe we'll need to to think about that coming up too. So, all right, awesome. Well, that should be it. Uh, unless anyone has anything else that they would like to address. Um, all right, great. Well, in that case, the next meeting is Tuesday, May 18th at 7, as the agenda states. So I'm sure we'll all see some uh, emails before then. Uh, does anyone move to adjourn? I'll move to adjourn. Thanks, Brooke. We have a second. Do we need a second for adjourning? I think it can be by consensus. Okay. Just leave. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to take your uh, everyone's uh, going absent as their consensus um, yeah. <laughs> to adjourn. So I will I will adjourn this meeting.